Our quest in this section consists in finding out whether there is a formula such that the models of the formula correspond to the stable models of a given logic program. And if I say just models, I mean models in the sense of Boolean assignments or classical models, as you may uh, call them. And of course, when we talk about programs, we talk about stable models. And there I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so where to start? Well, one observation to make is that when we look at a, at a program, each atom in this program is defined by a bunch of rules. But somehow each of these rules gives only sufficient conditions for an atom to be true, right? So if a body of the rule is true, the rule applies and we get the head. However, now if you make an atom, if you throw an atom up in the air and you say, oh, this atom is true now, it doesn't tell us anything whether uh, one of these rules, one of these bodies must be true as well. And that is actually the idea of Keith Clark in, back in 78 when he captured the closed world assumption with the idea of completion. And the, just staying a bit by, with hand waving, here the idea is more to say, okay, if I have an atom uh, and I make it true, then also one of the rules must have applied. So more or less there is also a direction in the other, in the other sense. And the idea then it boils down to adding necessary conditions to the specification of atoms. Okay, here it is again in, in real uh, natural language, not just in my hand waving or sign language. Anyway, so the idea of, Cl of Keith Clark was that uh, you take a, a set of implications, which are the rules in a program, into a definition. And definition means an if and only if condition by adding the necessary counterpart of the implication. And the necessary counterpart of the implication means if you have an implication in this direction, you add the implication in the other direction. And that's the idea of completion. Now, how can we make this precise? So here's the definition of the completion of a normal logic program. Yes, I know it looks complicated, but it isn't. So don't run away. Don't switch me off. Okay, so let's just go through this step by step. So what we actually do is we, we look at all the atoms among the atoms occurring in the program. We're not taking the alphabet because the alphabet may be infinite and hence we would get an infinite set. So we just look at the atoms occurring in the program. And for each of these atoms, we build an equivalence or a bidirectional implication which defines the atom. And keep in mind here we already have a, um, an equivalence that goes in both directions, an if and only if condition. And how do we build it? Well, we look at all the rules that have this atom A here in the head and we disjoin, we make the disjunction of these guys by disjoining their bodies. And this looks uh, complicated. First of all, you, you may remember this here. This is the body of the rule. And then this here simply turns the body into a formula and this is defined here. So we take the body, which is a set. We look at all the positive atoms in this set and we conjoin them. And then we conjoin them with the conjunction of all the negative atoms in the set preceded by a negation. So this is simply a syntactic transformation to make sure that a set, which is the body of the rules, is now transformed into a conjunction. Nothing more is happening. Okay, good. So this means then that A is true if and only if one of, and this is what this disjunction here does, one of, at least one of the bodies uh, of the rules is true. This is what completion means. Now, one subtlety actually to keep in mind we look here at all atoms in the program. We are not working rule by rule, we work atom by atom. And this means actually, if there is an atom that has not been defined by any rule, right? That, has, that never appears as a head uh, of any rule, then actually there is no such rule and we get an empty disjunction. And this means, and keep in mind, empty disjunction, the neutral element of a disjunction is false. This actually means for all atoms that have never been defined by a rule, we get that this atom is equivalent to false. Okay. Well, perhaps if you need to digest this a little bit, just so you pause here at that point, because next we will look at an example. So here's an example. And this is actually our running example in this uh, and the following uh, sections. But let, don't let me discuss this example any further, because after all, uh, Clark's completion is a purely syntactic translation. We take a logic program 
and we translate it or transform it into a set of formulas, actually a set of equivalences. And let's just do this and not worry too much what the, what the program actually is telling us. So this is our program. We have um, six rules and we also get six equivalents, but this is by chance because keep in mind, the completion does not work rule by rule, it works atom by atom. So by chance we have six rules and also six atoms, but here for instance you see that there are two rules for E and also there is no rule for F. Okay, let's actually see what we get as the completion. Looking at atom A, we gather all the rules that have A in the head and there's only one here. This guy, the body is the empty uh, conjunction, the neutral element of the conjunction is true, so we get that A is equivalent to true, which makes a lot of sense because after all A is a fact. So B, so for B there is a single rule, B if not A, and this is again the sufficient condition, what we do now we add the necessary condition, the implication in the other way, so B is equivalent to not A. That's interesting, right, because since we already know that A is true, B must thus be false by these two equivalences. Okay, anyway, then there's also a single rule for C. This is this guy here. And here you see actually the, 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 the syntactic translation also because here we have a comma and this is mapped here into a conjunction, of course, because here we have a, a formula. And there's a single rule for C, hence this body is translated into this uh, conjunction here. Also a single rule for D, nothing surprising happening here. Now here is the first time actually something interesting happens. We have two rules for E, hence E can be true if this rule applies or if this rule applies. Hence, we, we get the Hilly equivalence in, com in the completion that E, if and only if the body of the first rule applies or the body of the second rule applies. And that's the first time that we actually see such, such a disjunction at work, but I think it's, it's pretty intuitive. And last but not least, uh, after all, there is no rule that gives us F. Hence, if we look for all the bodies of the rules that have F in the head, there are none. Hence, we get here the empty disjunction, which um, boils down to the neutral element of the disjunction, which is false, and F is equivalent to false. And again, this makes a lot of sense, because there is no rule that gives us F, hence F must be false. Okay, I think this example already illustrated a little bit the mechanics, and actually how things start to make sense if you look at the, for instance, here at the, at the corner cases and also here at the, the several bodies for, for uh, when, when, a rule has, when, when an atom has several rules. But now let's actually go back to the original intuition of, of, of Clark and pull things a little bit apart, perhaps just to provide another angle on the completion. So stay tuned. So this is just to provide you with an alternative definition of the completion formulas that stresses a bit more this uh, notion of sufficient and necessary conditions, right? So the idea is that actually the uh, completion formulas of a logic program are equivalent to the union of these two sets here. And actually each set is almost the same as the completion formula that we've seen before, just that instead of an equivalence here, I give here the sufficient conditions and here the necessary conditions. Now the set of sufficient conditions, so A if something is true, gives us more or less the same as we have in the logic program. And the second set actually adds this new quality, it adds actually the necessary conditions. So if A is true, then actually some of the rules that have A in the head must have applied. Okay. So just, um, again, if, if you find this notation a bit too clumsy because this looks actually pretty heavy, we can also introduce an auxiliary set just as a side remark, right, which uh, accumulates all the bodies of rules that have A in the head, and then this all this gets a bit simpler. So perhaps this helps one or, or the other among you to, to understand things a bit better, what is happening here in these formulas. Okay, now, have, given these two sets, actually, one can associate the first one more or less with the program in the sense that if we are a bit sloppy and say well if we have a, a, a logic program rule and we have a comma then we interpret this as a as a conjunction then we can look at the models of this as well and if we want to make it precise then the models of this set of formulas uh, corresponds exactly to the models of the program and hence this guy here gives us the sufficient conditions and as as already said so the second set above this, this guy here completes actually the program. So if you take it that here's the program and then you add something, this is actually what you add. And this guy adds the necessary conditions for all atoms. Okay, 
Now that we've seen this alternative view, let's actually also play a little bit with this along with our example. Let's just briefly zap through the previous definitions with our example. Well, first of all, notice that such a program here can also be interpreted as a set of formulas. We have here implications. We just have to reinterpret the comma as conjunction and an empty body as being true. But then we can also look at the, at the classical models as, as the models uh, of this set of formulas. And in fact, uh, transforming this into the sufficient completion formulas doesn't add anything because both sets have the same models, right? The same classical models. Of course, here on the left, we can also talk about the stable models because it's a logic program, but here we can't apply the notion of stable models because these are formulas, right? But first of all, we note that both the original program interpreting the symbols a bit differently and the set of sufficient completion formulas have the same models. Okay, now the real new quality arises when we add the necessary condition, that is the implications in the other way. Because now actually by adding more formulas we delete models. And actually these two guys together have much much fewer models uh, than uh, just the sufficient uh, completion formulas. But we will see this later on also on this example. Anyway, putting both together gives us this set of equivalences and it somehow in, in a way it doesn't matter if we start from the set of equivalences or we conjoin the, suf the, suffic the sufficient and the necessary uh, conditions for the atoms. So you see I also always have problems with sufficient and necessary, but well anyway. Good. So this, I think, first of all, perhaps enlightened a little bit the, the syntactic translations. Let's see uh, how the models actually of these guys look like. The good news is every stable model of a program is also a model of the completion formulas of the program. That is, the classical models of the completion. But well, not yet vice versa. So we are getting there more or less, but we are not yet there. And since these models actually are of quite some importance, they have a name, they're called supported models. So the models, the classical models of the completion formulas of a program are called the supported models. And they're actually called supported because the property of this model is more or less that whenever an atom is true in such a model, there's also a rule whose body is true. But where this falls short is that this will not recursively continue and be rooted in the facts, but one thing after the other. So supported models of a program, important notion. Good. So now actually we have a, we have a, a set inclusion property, right? So every stable model of a program is a supported model of a program and every supported model of a program is in turn a model of a program. So first of all, we, we start with our program and we have a lot of models. And again, these are the models of the sufficient completion formulas. Then we add the necessary completion formulas. So we add formulas and this means we eliminate models. So these are then the supported models. And in these supported models, there are still the stable models. So that's more or less the hierarchy that, that we have here. But again, I think I was now, I was talking about this hierarchy, but the question is, how many are there? How much, how, how much is actually the reduction? And for this, let's get back to our example. Here's again our example, just now presented in a horizontal rather than a vertical way. Anyway, while before I didn't want to talk, to talk too much about the example because we just dealt with the syntactic transformation of a program into its completion formulas, now we are interested in the model. So let's actually check a little bit what this program has to tell us and what actually its stable models are. Well, the first thing actually that jumps to our eyes is that A is a fact, hence A must be true. Well, given that A is true, this rule can never apply. And since it's the only rule that gives us B, B must be false. Okay, let's jump to the last two rules. So here actually, given that we just actually uh, found out that B must be false, this rule can never apply and never allow us to derive E. Hence, we are left with this so-called, so let's say, fishy rule, right? Where A can be uh, derived by itself. And so we have a circle here. So in an ASP setting, of course, there is no derivation of E that goes over the rules down to the facts with this construction, hence E must be false. 
Okay, given that A must be true and E must be false, we are left here with an even loop. So C depends on not D and D itself on not C. And so these two rules, more or less C if not D, D if not C, uh, are an even loop and they are normally the source of two stable models. So anyway, what are the two stable models? Well, we have the A must be true and either C or D must be true, while B and E are always false, right? So two stable models, one with A and C and one with A and D. Okay, but this is now the stable model intuition. The, the idea now here is to look actually how we reduce from the models of the program to the supported models to actually the stable models. First of all, we have to realize that we have uh, six uh, propositions, six letters here, A to F, and so we get 64 interpretations. Okay, 60 way, 64 ways to assign true and false to A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, among them, our program has 21 models, or alternatively, the uh, sufficient uh, completion formulas of the program have 21 models. And among them, we find our stable model candidates, A, C, and A, D, but also many, well, actually 19 others, among them, the model that makes all of the atoms true. So these are, this is the big set of models of our program. Now, if we add the necessary completion formulas, we add formulas, but we eliminate uh, models. And here, this is actually drastically because we only get three supported models. That is, we get three models of the completion. And here again, we, we have uh, our stable model candidates. But we also get a spurious model, and I, I tend to call this guy a clone. It's more or less a clone of this stable model here, just that uh, by using the completion, we cannot eliminate this self-fulfilling promise here of E, right? Because in completion, and let's now let's ignore this rule here, if we just apply completion to, to this rule, we get E is equivalent to E. And there are two ways to make this true by setting E to true or by setting E to false. And this is exactly what happens here, right? Here E is set to false and here E is set to true. So our completion by itself is not strong enough to eliminate these vicious cycles. Hence, completion cannot distinguish between the two and say, oh, this is actually the good one and this is the bad one. This actually works with a stable model semantics, but we do not yet know how to characterize things, right? Up to, up to supported models, we, we know actually which formulas to write, that we only get uh, these models, but in the end we get two stable models, namely uh, the one containing A and C and A and D. But the question is, of course, how can we eliminate these strange models here from the set of supported models, because then we are done. Okay, this will actually be, uh, well, subject to one of the following sections. Okay, so this completes the first section here. Let's now look at tightness. And tightness, actually, this is a property that guarantees us that supported models coincide with stable models. But, well, you didn't hear that because you want to watch the other video. Okay, stay tuned.